Hi, this is Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that spotlights the stars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So sit back, relax, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. You know, in life we seem to find people who can do just about anything. My guest today has played Jesus in Godspell. He was a mayoral candidate in 2004, a member of the Chicago rock band Mammoth in the 70s and 80s, and he rubs elbows with many well-known musicians. Will you please welcome my friend from St. Augustine, Florida, Kevin Friend. (laughs) <laughs> hey, there he is. Good morning, Rick, and uh, such a pleasure. I appreciate you uh, you uh, letting me be on your podcast. Well, I'll tell you, buddy, it's a, it's a treat. Uh, Leslie first got me introduced to you, and she just really loves everything that you post online. You, your vibe is just something sensational. But first, let's talk about the fact that you've you've played all these roles. You played Jesus and Godspill, a mayoral candidate. You remember this band. You've done this, that, and the other thing. <laughs> Looking back on it, do you go, "Wow, what a cool, what a cool ride it's been so far"? You, you know, uh, Rick, it's it's really uh, funny. I'm trying to wrap my head around the entire thing. I've got uh, Norm Fowler, who's in uh, the ba- Baton Rouge. He's uh, he's starting a uh, writing a, a biography. We're, we're, it's kind of a uh, semi autobiography. Uh, we're, we're actually working on it now because there were just so so much so many things in my life. I, I I'm I'm a, just a blessed man, and I am still trying to wrap my head around all of it. <laughs> and, and Kevin, that's basically why we're doing the podcast here. Is uh, I, I would be you know, mentioning we would hear our song come on the radio, and I I would tell Leslie, my wife, that you know oh I I, I talked to that person or this person or that person. She goes, man, you've had an interesting life. You need to write a book about it. I don't write books. Right. Then she says, well, maybe you should do a podcast. And that's how this came to be. <laughs> right on. Let's back up to your days in Chicago with Mammoth. Sure. 70s and 80s. Uh, and the, right. day, the days before Auto-Tune and Pro Tools. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your career in Chicago uh, with Mammoth. Uh, can you give sure. us some of, some of your highlights of the gigs you played, things you did, sure. fun moments? Absolutely. Well, Rick, we uh, in, we got together about 1975. I put together um, some some dear friends, Gary Flanagan, Steve Crabtree, and the uh, and and, uh, and and some other friends there, and uh, we put together Mammoth. It was I had just I had j- literally just gotten out of high school. Uh, now these guys had just put a band together. They called it Mammoth. They said they were doing original music. I said, well, that sounds good. I got into the band. Um, I sort of, I sort of, I sort of, uh, or turned it over to the Kevin Friend show right away. <laughs> well, well, hey, I've got a great idea. Let's do my songs. <laughs> so I, so I became, I became the main songwriter. Now, a great story. We, um, there, there was a, a, a recording studio in, uh, in, in, in uh, Chicago downtown where everybody recorded. It's called Universal Recording. And everybody went there. Uh, everybody that came into town who was going to record, they went to Universal. That was the place to go. Three huge, big studios. Uh, we had a dear friend, uh, 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 Mr. Shevlin, who who was an, uh, started working for uh, Universal, and he had an uh, opportunity to get us in there for free. Uh, so we'd go at, like, you know, 1 in the morning, and we'd record, and it was just amazing. We were kids. I mean, I literally, I was 18 years old, 17 even. And so we're recording in, in, in Universal Studios. And just, oh boy, what, look, look, look at this. Everything's wonderful. Um, we recorded a song. It was called uh, Flight of the Warrior. Now, uh, as a child... I became uh, I, I became a songwriter. I wrote my first song when I was in eighth grade. So it's just one of those things. Some people write songs. Some people uh, fix engines on a '57 uh, Chevy. <laughs> you know, right. it just so happens that just happened to be what I do. And I said, okay, well, I'll I'll I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll I'll wrap my head around that and embrace that. So um, I wrote a song called "Flight of the Warrior." Now um, this is, it's a beautiful song, and it uh, it. Uh, it talks about uh, kings and and queens and and warriors and you know and I now I'm just a kid from Calumet City uh, lived behind Woolworths I mean I have no idea where <laughs> these ideas and these stories came from yeah. uh, I, I I'm thinking that that I'm uh, I'm I'm being channeled through an old soul that says here I, I need to write I need you to write this, <laughs> this story for me and truly truly tr- truly the truth so the song Flight of the Warrior was uh, chosen to be on the WKQX hometown album, which is when they actually had uh, had, had albums and vinyl. Um, this was the second WKQX, and we were the number one track. Um, so that's that's how all that started. So um, 
With that being said, uh, Jam Productions, who was the only people in Chicago who who produced every single show that came through Chicago, mm -hmm. um, they happened to uh, um, come to a show that we did for KQX, the Uptown Theater, and um, uh, Arnie Granite and Jerry Mickelson, who are the owners of, uh, of Jam Productions, said, hey, Kevin, here's my card. Give us a call. You guys sound great. So I gave him the call. We stopped uh, downtown. I went to talk to Arnie. He said, listen, would you like guys like to play the Park West? Now, I'm 18 years old. I said, <laughs> I said, well, I said, well, let me think about it. Park West. Uh, all right. I'll do it. So, so, <laughs> so I, I, honestly, I, I think I think when that came on, I was probably 20. And um, so uh, we, we opened for, uh, uh, for Ronnie Montrose. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, the boys, remember the Chicago boys, yeah, uh, yep, yep, Dirty yep. Dan, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a band called Horse Lips from uh, Ireland. Wonder, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful band. I don't know if you're familiar with them. No, I can't but, say uh, that name rings a bell. <laughs> yeah, Horse band, Lips. Band, band, strangely enough, a band called Horse Lips. Uh, a couple other shows that we did at the Park West. Now, here's a, a 20 year old kid playing the Park West Theater <laughs> and opening for Ronnie Montrose. Wow. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, well, gee, the, the music business is pretty easy this is all you got to do so uh obviously i learned i learned uh, i learned hard and fast that, right. that's not necessarily the truth uh so then we did a show at the aragon with uh, the hounds i mean you remember the hounds john hunter and the hounds mm -hmm. they, they were they were huge at the time they had just uh, signed a deal and um so we started doing all these shows so when we played old remember old chicago oh yes old chicago we amusement, park, a yeah. amusement park we played did a, Chica uh, a show there um, then uh, the Point East was a, a, a venue in the Dyer, Indiana. Yep. Dyer, <laughs> Dyer Straits, Indiana. Um, <laughs> That's an inside the, joke, folks. The, That's an inside joke. <laughs> yeah, right. Mark Knopfler, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so um, the, 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 the venue, uh, Point East in Dyer, Indiana, um, my, our uh, ma uh, alleged manager, was a Dave Foster, and he was putting together all the shows at uh, at the Point East. Now, the Point East was again the venue. Anybody that came into town, uh, you know, like 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 the sort of the comeback thing, uh, old school, a uh, humble pie, Montrose, Gam. I mean, everybody that came into town, Savoy Brown. Um, came to Point East and play, and they did a show there. It was a wonderful, wonderful venue. I don't know if you were if, if you were there or had been there or did shows. There I just or... I just know it by name. That's all. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. I mean, really, I mean, it, it was the place to be, absolutely the place to be, and the place to play. Uh, so we, as again, we opened for Montrose, Humble Pie, Savoy Brown, you know, and again, we're uh, Steppenwolf, and we're just kids, you know, we're kids. Right. I think, uh, gee, this is this is pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always I always wanted to be a rock star. I guess I am now. <laughs> we're going to feature a track from uh, the Mammoth Days. Uh, just okay. ain't right. Can you give me a quick uh, synopsis yeah, of Just Ain't Right? I sure can. This act, this song was actually. On the uh, San Antonio uh, Kiss ninety nine point five Kiss Kiss radio, it was on their album, sort of a KQX. Only this is in San Antonio, uh, and it's called "Just Ain't Right." Our bass player Van Quackenbush, he had just uh, he had just joined the Air Force, and his he was based in San Antonio. He says, "Hey, come on down, guys. These guys want to <laughs> let's record this song. They want to put it on their album." We said, "Okay, we'll do that too." So we went down. It's called "Just Ain't Right," and it's about life. It's just, some things just ain't right. All right, we're going to feature that now on the Someone You Should Know podcast with my guest, Kevin Friend. Yeah. 
that the truth that is uh, kevin yeah. friend and mammoth uh, my guest today on the someone you should know podcast kevin touring with mammoth and any of the other projects you've done since then with 2020 and you've had some unusual gigs along the road there's a section here we're doing called tales from the road and this is those infamous road stories where at the time we're not you know your fondest moment but you're looking back on it going gosh i can't believe i survived it what would you say would be your I would really, really love to tell the story about Steve Marriott from Humble Pie. Um, it, it, it isn't so much a, oh, my God, I can't believe I, I did this, but it's just really a great story. Uh, we had opened for uh, for Humble Pie at the Point East. My, um, this, is, this is one of the things I, I can't believe this happened, but my uh, guitar tech, Butchie, well, good old Butchie, he's not with us anymore. I bless you, Butchie. He had, had slammed Steve Marriott's fingers in the door of the dressing room. Oh my! Oh my! Broke, broke his fingers. So now uh, uh, Steve Marriott couldn't go. <laughs> couldn't go on and play. Uh, obviously, now Bobby Tench, who was his guitar player at the time, came on stage with us, uh, Mammoth, on stage, and we did about a thirty-minute to forty-five minute uh, version of Thirty Days in the Hole. Oh. <laughs> so, so, so I've got, I've got. You know, of course, I had to take my shirt off because we always did that because we 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 look because we look good when we took our shirts off back then because <laughs> you were young <laughs> yes. and uh so i'm 30 days in the hole <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> down, so we're we're uh we did about like i said about 30 i mean just a jam 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 bobby ted i mean the crowd was just out of their minds crazy and then steve came on with his broken hand like ah <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a, a very fond wow fond, fond, fond memory. That's a, that's a really good one. That's a really good one. I've had some useful yeah. ones through the years. That's a, that's a good one. You just uh, we were following you on Facebook, and uh, we saw that you were just in L.A. for some Halloween gathering, and you, yeah. some, you really uh, got a chance to meet a lot of interesting people out there. You want to kind of give us a quick synopsis of that? Sure, absolutely. Um, my dear friend Rob Vukulich, he he was the uh, he was the ear of uh, Pyramid Audio. I call him Pyramid Audio Guru. Um, it, it, I mean, it, the the things he does, the production, uh, that sort of thing is just it, it, is just um, uh, mind blowing. He's so good. I, I call him the best the best ear in the business. Um, he he did most of the shows. Uh, he did actually did the sound for most of the shows at the Point East. Well, we've been friends since you know too long. Fifty years, I think. Uh, Millard Fillmore was president. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so it's been it's been quite some time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we started recording in his studio there. It was in South Holland. Well, he moved to L.A. Oh, he first he moved to Nashville, then he moved to L.A. Uh, every year he puts together a uh, uh, an epic uh, ho- Halloween bash in Bell Canyon. Uh, his friend Lori has a beautiful mansion out there, and uh, they 
uh, invite many musicians and whoever wants to stop by, uh, you, know, uh, you know, talented, legendary uh, uh, session players, things like that. This year we had uh, uh, the literally legend blues guitarist uh, Albert Lee. Oh, you're who kidding. Was, uh, who toured with uh, with Eric Clapton uh, and, uh, yeah, and Bill yeah. Wyman and and uh, actually Eric Clapton called him uh, the greatest ever. Really? So uh, awesome. he, he was there. Uh, we invited uh, Clem, uh, Clem Burke uh, from Blondie, yeah. uh, a couple others, and just some just really just talented musicians. And he puts this thing together. So I went out there this last weekend to be to be a part of it. Uh, aside from that. Uh, it, it was it was it was literally just an epic epic uh, 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 a party and, and in real real Hollywood. I mean, t- typical Hollywood. I mean, actors. Uh, we had opera singers, yeah, magicians, <laughs> jugglers. <you know? laughs> but but it, it was really it was a, just a treat and just a, a, really a blessing and a and a and a, and a treasure. Um, so at the end of the night, everything's like uh, breaking things down. Uh, I have a dear friend. His name is uh, uh, Brian Chatton. Brian Chatton, he wrote a book called uh, Rolling with Rock Royalty. He uh, he has, has played with uh, Phil Collins, B.B. King. Uh, J- uh, he just did a, an album with John Anderson from Yes, and we're dear friends, have been for years. And he is an absolute n- nut, crazy out of his mind, which is wonderful. That always that always fits. Oh, yeah. So, um, so, so he, uh, Rob Uglish and myself, the three students, we got together and my dear from Thursday to Sunday, we never stopped laughing. I mean, on the floor, <laughs> on the floor laughing aside from that. So the end of the night, had, the end of the night had come and it's pretty much about, uh, there, there were probably 150 people in this house at, at one point that night. And now this, the, the party started at seven. This was about two 30 in the morning. We've got about. Uh, eight of us still there, uh, all musicians talking about, uh, yes, Trevor Rabin, uh, John yeah, Anderson, right. all of our, our stories, this and that, Humble Pie, Steve Marriott. And so um, Brian gets on the piano and he uh, on the grand piano and he starts. So I get uh, the PA still on. So we put a little put a little mic on there. I got we did. Um, we started with Red House, then we did, uh, <laughs> then we did Great Charles, Georgia. Oh my! Uh, then we did Get Back, <laughs> and we and just at two thirty in the morning. I mean, just a just a, a the perfect Hollywood party. You wonderful, know? wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I would have loved really to be a fly on and, the wall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm telling you. And uh, it was just, it really just an amazing, amazing trip. It was absolutely epic. Uh, and I, I, I certainly, I, I, I love L.A. Uh, <laughs> I, I love Los Angeles. I mean, I mean that if you want to be, it, 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 I want to be in the mix. If you're in the mix, then go to Los Angeles. Right. So that's where everybody is. And we're invited to um, the Sabin Theater, which is a beautiful theater, um, for Belinda Carlisle. Oh. Uh, Cindy, Cindy Lauper was there. And uh, we just had such an amazing time, but but that's 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 the scene. If you want to be in the scene, you want to be where the people are. Oh, right. and, and and I don't care uh, po- politically or how much it costs or whatever. But L.A. is the place to right. be, and, I, and right. just absolute blessing. I was able to get out there. Wonderful, wonderful. And if you want to check that out, go to Kevin Friend's Facebook page. He has a lot of photos from the gig. It was really kind of neat. Uh, on the door is the next song we're going to feature. Can you give us the synopsis on that one, Kev? Sure, sure. Um, this is a song uh, with my band, Twenty Twenty. We were we've been together since about nineteen eighty four. We um, we were on the MTV Basement Tapes, which at that time uh, people send in their videos. Right. Well, happened to have a um, a gentleman who worked for uh, Editel, which was a post production company. Well, that now that was another band that we didn't really I didn't really get into with you. It was called Twenty One Summers. We won the basement basement tapes twice oh you're kidding then, i didn't know that son of a gun and I, I and i do apologize for putting that all uh for for we didn't even discuss that there was a band called 21 summers um uh reed brody was the producer and he worked for editel well it was another one of those things like universal we got to do this stuff for free so we sent in a video called um uh, I am the one, and and I, I, I do apologize. I didn't fill that in in, in the information that I had sent you. And uh, we won the we won the basement tape. So then I I am the one was on uh, was on regular rotation on MTV. So now uh, Reed said to me, "Well, listen." Uh, and at the time, I was still doing twenty twenty. Now the twenty one summers band was never never a, a touring band or a, a working band. It was simply just a video band. Wow. So at the same time, <laughs> I was doing. Yeah, yeah, right. And so at the same time, I was doing 2020. Well, he said, um, 
uh, listen, why don't I, I'll, I'll thank you for doing this with me in 21 Summers. Let me do a video for you, um, which is called, uh, uh, it was, at the time it was called Love is a Hurting Thing. And that was, that was on the base, uh, one of the basement tapes and was on regular rotation. <laughs> this song, this, this song that we sp- are speaking of, On the Door, it's a story about, um, uh, uh, Calumet City, uh, hometown, about beautiful women, about drugs. <laughs> uh, dr- drugs uh, uh drugs in the kitchen so you got to put a lock on the door and that's what this, that story's about all right very good that's what we're going to play right now on the someone you know podcast
Kevin Friend is my guest today on the Someone You Should Know podcast. It is On the Door with Kevin's Band 2020. Kevin, you have uh, we were mentioning already you've rubbed elbows with many, many musicians. Any particular moment stand out as maybe one of the great musicians that uh, you, you say, I don't believe I actually did that. I played with someone. Or you know, you. honestly, so, so, just so many. I, I, You know, and like I said, though, Steve Marriott just, just really... I, I I hold our friendship dear. Uh, we we were th- with them a couple of times. Um, the um, I, I, I have a really quick story of uh, of Steve <laughs> Steve Marriott after after he had uh, we were on stage and he smashed his fingers and all that. We left we left there. We went to a hotel with chicks, drugs, booze, and so now it's four o'clock in the morning. Uh, sitting on a bed, me, Steve Marriott, my guitar tech, uh, Sparky, and my br- my brother, and uh, no booze, no drugs, no booze. It's all gone. It's four in the morning, and we're watching Sea Hunt. <laughs> 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 what, what was your finest moment with Steve Marriott? Watching Sea Hunt on WGN TV, <laughs> and I mean, I mean, la- laughing out loud on the floor, oh like, doing voices, and and Steve Steve Marriott says. Uh, uh, when, when, when's the liquor store open? <laughs> hey, hey, mate, when's the liquor store open? I said, well, we've got about two hours. He says, okay, well, let's uh, let's get some more sea hunt going. And we'll... <laughs> <laughs> that, um, that one I will share. Definitely, it is uh, very, very funny. I've got a great uh, David Lee Ross story. Oh, go, I go, go, go. I was in... Um, I was in L.A. and I was uh, allegedly going to sign a, a, a manage, management uh, agreement with it. With, I actually did. Uh, I had uh, I went out there to uh, uh, meet a, a friend of mine. Uh, Tamara was her name. I don't want to give her full name, but uh, she uh, she was going to be in the business. And so she and I are at the Rainbow, and uh, this is '88. Uh, David Lee Roth was just just in his heyday of his solo career. Right. Uh, you know, he had Steve Vai and uh, 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 Billy Sheehan, just a killer band. At any rate, he's there, drunk, of course, and he's uh, uh, this girl who, who allowed me to, to, to spend the, you know, the, the weekend meeting this guy. Well, he, uh, <laughs> David Lee Roth takes her in the kitchen. And I'm like, uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> it's about... Again, two, two, three in the morning, it's closing down, and he's got a bodyguard outside the kitchen, like, you know, can't come in here. I said, look, I go I go in the kitchen, there's David hitting on this girl that I was with, and I said, Dave, listen, I can appreciate you hit, uh, hitting on chicks, your star and all that, but I don't know where this girl lives, and she has the car, so I'm going to have to... <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to ask you to let me uh, have this girl if you if you would. And uh, so I and, and the, the funny part about that is he's got the limo, of course. You know she's got a she's got a, a, a Chevy Chevette. So I got the girl we, and the, and I got the girl in the Chevy Chevette. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you could actually say the title I cock blocked David Lee Roth. <laughs> In, in my in my Chevy Chevette. In my Chevy Chevette. Oh gosh, <laughs> we're gonna change course a little bit here. Uh, okay. Leslie, my wife, uh, follows you religiously. Uh, she thinks your inspirational posts throughout the week are just phenomenal, especially the ones you post on Sunday. Your background yeah. and uh, and how you got to be so uh, so inspirational. Well, you know, Rick. Um, I, I had gone through uh, some just, just insane tragedy. Most of it all uh, uh, revolved around uh, alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a, a deep alcoholic. It was a point where alcohol was my life. I wasn't my life. It, it had overtaken me. A um, few years ago, uh, 2010, I, I moved from um, Oak Brook Terrace. We, uh, my wife at the time and I, we moved down to uh, to Key Biscayne in in, in Florida. And uh, beautiful. She said, oh, I have I, at the time I was the hotel commissioner, the liquor commissioner. I was running for mayor in Oak Brook Terrace at the time. Now, I, again, I, I mean, I've always been a, 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 a I've always, you know, been a religious person, a spiritual, spiritually connected my entire life. But the the way that that started with my uh, Facebook inspirations and my prayers and all. Uh, so when we got back down here, I, my life just just spiraled. I got uh, two DUIs in two months. I was in jail for six months. 
I mean, I now I was the police. You know? <laughs> now all of a sudden, I'm I'm the other guy. I'm I so so and I was I was absolutely shy. I mean, literally had had a, had a mental nervous breakdown. Um, and and alcohol was 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 what that was all about. Uh, I, I was homeless. Uh, I lived in a homeless shelter about six months, but now wow. that didn't mean I, that didn't mean I wasn't still talented and I wasn't still, I wasn't still full of, uh, you know, whatever. So I, it, now th- this is, a, this is a great story. Go very quickly. Um, so I went and as working in a, I mean, living in a homeless shelter, I went and applied for, to be a precious metals broker. <laughs> now, <laughs> imagine. So now I, I, I went in and talked to this guy I, and BS him. We talked for two hours. I showed him my videos. You know, <laughs> I did my I did my voices, mm-hmm. a little comedy. We we talked and laughed for two hours. He said, "Can you start on Monday?" Awesome, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> now, but but now the point is, every 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 at noon, I was have I was drinking a pint of vodka, oh. and uh, and 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 I was I was I was functioning as an alcoholic. To make a long story shorter. Um, I, I, I just, you know, one day I just said, you know, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be that guy anymore. And uh, five years ago, I, uh, I, I, I became sober, and and I just, it, 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 it completely turned my life around. You know, I, I'm literally the bet, the bet, best man I've ever been in my life. And the spiritual connection is what that was all about. I realized, you know, when, 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 when you're rock bottom, there's a basement. It gets lower. So uh, rock rock bottom has a basement. So I, I just I don't want to be that guy anymore. I, I and and from the point that started, I started doing a morning inspiration to 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 uh, for, to just share my testimony. I I do it every day, every single day. I have for almost five years now. On Sunday, I do the prayers as well. And the point is. You know, I, I, I'm not a Bible thumper. Oh, you must believe in Jesus, or if you don't, I, you know, I, I'm not into that. Listen, you do you. I'm telling, I'm telling you what what worked for me. Right. Absolutely. This is what works for me. This is what I believe. I believe in. I praise Jesus, and I believe in God. That's me. Uh-huh. You believe whatever you want. You know, Buddhist, uh, Ju- Judaism, whatever you are. We all have. We're all under this one beautiful thing, which is love. Po- you know, the, and the power of, of, of this beautiful thing that we're all in, regardless of what you believe, that that's where I come from. And it's really beautiful because over these years, many, many people come on, my many followers. And, and you know, the in, in the morning of people, someone say, gee, I really needed that today. I mean, that just that just warms my heart that uh, my testimony uh, um, allows them to to maybe look at things a little differently, and perhaps look to look to to the Lord or look to to faith to bring them through uh, through the, 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 the so many many obstacles that we go through in our lives. Wonderful, and that is wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. And, uh, and that was just the and, and, it, and that was why I, Leslie wanted me to do this uh, this interview. Well, you've, you've, you've got a wonderful career and everything like that, but she says this guy is very very spiritual. He's very very uh, in tune to things. And he really speaks to me well. So you really hit the nail on the head. And the thing is, Rick, is that, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, Kevin Friend, yeah, Jesus, yeah, you know, you get people like that. And you say, hey, look, like I said, you do you. And, and again, I don't, I don't, I don't walk the street and say, you must believe in Jesus. <laughs> you, you know, it's nothing like that. Yeah. That's just, a, that's just a part of what I am. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it, it's a beautiful part. It's a beautiful part. I get up in the morning. I look outside. I start talking to my uh, my grandparents, parents, people I've lost in my life. I bring them. I bring all the spirits in in the morning, yeah. and I pray. <laughs> and I pray on. And I say, Lord, I said, What do you want me to do today? I go in and I re- I, I write my my inspiration. Wonderful. So that start that awesome. starts my day, and it fills it fills my day. And I and I can still be an idiot. I can still be a goofball, <laughs> and I can still be a rock star. <laughs> Absolutely, Kevin. We've been mentioning the fact that we can. Contact you via Facebook and such. Any other uh, social yeah, media uh, sources? Got, got, uh, KevinFriendMusic.com is my official music site. Uh, KevinFriendMusic.com. And uh, it, there's a little story about me and some music on there as well. And, uh, um, and uh, yeah, and Facebook, for sure, that is that as well. I use, I use, you know, Facebook is funny. You get people who, 
people who, uh, you know, oh, I hate Facebook, oh, it destroys people. I said, look, it's all a matter of what you do with it. Right. I said, we, we, what were the, he's, uh, Zuck has given us a, a multi-billion dollar publishing company and said, here, you guys do whatever you want. So I I'm, I use a creative, it's like arts and crafts. Right. You, know? yeah, you use it's it like for my, your inspiration. Like little, yeah, absolutely. I it's, mean, like, it's like my little magazine that I do every morning, you know? Absolutely. I do a little a little music, a couple of jokes, a little inspiration. Hey, 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 look what I got today. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap the show up with uh, Look Away, Kevin. Can you tell us real quick about this particular song? And then uh, we'll we'll say our goodbyes and invite everyone else to be a friend of Kevin Friend. A friend of Kevin Friend. Listen, Rick, I want to thank you so very kindly. Uh, this song, um, Look Away, it's about... Um, a look away when the music is over. Look away when the damage is done. Um, and and and, and uh, it, it talks about. Uh, unfortunately, the music business doesn't last forever. You know, when you're a kid, and I've been so blessed in all the things I've been able to do. Uh, you think when you're 20, well, then this is life. This is what happens. Well, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Doesn't always go that way. Uh, many people uh, are in it for their lives, like Sammy Hagar, dear, you know, uh, dear man, and uh, he says, "I'm going to do this till I die." A look away. It's uh, just really. Uh, it's all about uh, uh, music. Your entire life, and you wait. You're waiting for that for the for the for the boys to call for that one last show. And uh, every year, of course, we do that Toys for Tots, which we're doing this year. Um, in, in, in Avenue 912 in Griffith, Indiana. Every year we get together, we do a reunion, and we do a, a show for Toys for Tots for the kids, of course, which is the most important thing is to help the kids. Roger that. All right, Kevin, thanks so much for being a guest on my show, man. It was, uh, once again, a treat, and thanks again for your inspirational vibes. Thanks for the music, and thanks for all you do. Absolutely. Listen, uh, many blessings to you and Leslie, and I so appreciate you letting me be a part of this uh, wonderful podcast you've got here, and I so appreciate it.
Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast, because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you and so do I.